Next on TVW, the Washington State Supreme Court listens to oral arguments in the case of Citizens Against Tolls versus Michael J. Murphy, Washington State Treasurer et al. This case was heard in Olympia on September 18th. The final case for today is uh, State Extra Citizens Against Tolls, Appellant versus Michael J. Murphy, Respondents. Uh, Mr. Newman, you have reserved 15 minutes for your opening, and uh, is, uh, Katie, is that right? Cade? Cade? You have 20 minutes for your argument, and then Mr. Newman, you'll have five minutes or less for rebuttal. You may proceed. May it please the court. My name is Sean Newman. I represent the group Citizens Against Tolls. You should have a handout in front of you of various illustrative exhibits that should assist the court in following my argument. This is a challenge to the contracting and financing of the new publicly funded Tacoma Narrow, Narrows Bridge project. I want to tell you a little about the history of the project and this court's deliberations first, then I'll talk about the competitive bidding argument and then our bonding argument and I'll weave in it our constitutional argument. So let me tell you about a little bit of the history of this project. In the year 2000, this court unanimously decided in the Peninsula Neighborhood Association case that the original development agreement to build a second Tacoma Narrows Bridge was enforceable because it violated existing state laws concerning what could be told, who imposes tolls, and how those revenues are to be used. It's important to understand at that time in 2000 that the contract was, was uh, proposed to be privately funded with the developer entering into the contracts, not with the state entering into the contract. In 2002, the legislature responded to your decision by executing EHB 2723, which amended some of those specific laws governing tolling and more importantly, change the financing for the project from private to public funds. And this is very important because rather than the private developer executing private contracts to build the bridge, the state is now executing publicly financed contracts for this massive public works project. Well, Council, the, uh, back in 1994, that, that's the original contract between WSBOT and UIW, right? No. The original contract is dated 1999. The project was selected uh, pursuant to the uh, Secretary of Transportation's authority, which is your first exhibit, where the, he's allowed to s solicit proposals, up to six proposals. That was one of the six that was selected. So the original, the proposal was selected in, uh, in uh, 1994. The contract was executed in 1999. And the way that the uh, agreement was reached in 1994 was under the, the this new mechanism that was set up under uh, 4746, what's now everybody's referring to as the private or the PPI Act. Correct. It was selected in your first uh, illustrative exhibit sets forth how that works. But basically, the Secretary of Transportation was allowed to solicit up to six demonstration projects. This was one of the six. And having done that, then they were also authorized under that uh, provision to enter into a contract. Enter into a development agreement with the whoever proposed the develop, development, correct. And at that time was a company called United Infrastructure. And that's UIW? Am correct. I, okay. And that's, they're still uh, a part of this project? No. They, uh, they were terminated. Uh, they're not a part of the project any further. The, what happened, and I can get to that argument, uh, when I talk about uh, the uh, competitive bidding, but um, they were, they, the, the d original development agreement had to be renegotiated because of the legislature's decision to change the funding. It was renegotiated uh, in July of 2002, but, uh, and, and then it was, uh, they were paid off, and uh, uh, Tacoma Narrows Contractors is now the contractor. Pursuant the to the agreement with UIW in, 19, in 2001? No. Uh, pursuant, um, that, that uh, agreement with the Tacoma Narrows contractors didn't exist in bef uh, 2001. 
There was no agreement. The only agreement that was ever there before the legislature changed the paradigm, changed the funding, was a development agreement with UIW uh, dated 1999. That was the only agreement there, period. And you're saying that TNC was not selected as a result of the negotiations between WSDOT and UIW? Well, you have to understand that the development agreement, um, the, the, the agreement you're talking about was executed by uh, WASDOT, not by UIW. See, the original plan, when it was privately funded, was for UIW to execute all the agreements to build the bridge. And there would be no concern about competitive bidding. That wouldn't be an issue because it was private money. Now that it's public money and the, and the, the legislature changed the, the rules, it was un, not until like July 2002 that there was any contract with to Tacoma Narrows uh, contractors. There was no contract with Tano Tacoma Narrows contractors prior to that date. So you're saying that, that the, uh, the negotiations that were entered into in July of 2002 between WSDOT and UIW didn't provide for this contract relationship between WSDOT and TNC? No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that, that any contract is, uh, executed by the state using public money to build a public works project has to comply with state competitive bidding laws. That's what we're saying. Well, what, what I'm trying to do is untangle which agreements we're talking, which, which contracts sure. you're arguing about, and yeah. this did start back in 1994 in the relationship between WSDOT and UIW. UIW still, it seems to me, uh, in the picture uh, as of July 16, uh, uh, 2002, when there's an amendment amended uh, agreement between them, and as I understood that amendment, amended agreement, that resulted in WSDOT choosing or being uh, entitled to choose TNC to be the contractor. Well, uh, as a result, I, I think it's fair to say after that agreement was modified and whatever, um, that TNC was, was selected as the, the uh, uh, design builder. I don't know. I hope your argument, counsel, on the competitive bidding issue, is that contract that you're asking us to declare in violation of the statutory bid, bidding uh, requirements, or is it, or are subsequent contracts uh, what you're challenging? Uh, Justice Johnson, we're asking you to declare that contract, the design build contract with TNC, violated existing competitive bidding laws. In fact, at trial, the transcript uh, for the uh, September 13th, that issue came up and, and Judge Bershauer had asked the state's attorney, well, you know, Mr. Newman is, is, is saying that a particular uh, competitive bidding law was, was in existence at the time the contract with TNC was executed. And she responded that, well, the, that law, that competitive bidding law, 42, 47.20, uh, uh, postdated the selection of the project way back in 1994, which is true, but the, the, my point is that just as in the P&A case, uh, any and all agreements executed by the state to carry forward or to execute a, a PPI project had to comply with the existing state law. And uh, let, let me just walk through. The caissons down there now and they're pouring concrete and if we agree with your position, what happens? Well, I understand that, Your Honor. No, um, you know. First of all, let me say that risk factor was uh, addressed in the at the uh, September third emergency hearing on our on our complaint, and uh, both uh, Tacoma Narrows contractors, which was involved in the case at that point in time, the state and Tacoma Narrows contractors discussed the risk, discussed the need to have Judge Bershauer issue an immediate uh, ruling, despite his reservation. So I guess your answer to my question was yes. It would no, and it wouldn't necessarily stop the project. Uh, you know, the bonding, for example, is, is uh, supported by the full faith and credit of the state, and they aren't going to be due until 2008. So it's, as far as this contract, are you just attempting to have a cause of action recognized by some either unsuccessful or, or non-invited bidder out there that was excluded from the process? No. No. I'm here representing citizens who are concerned about how this project went through the process, how this project's going to be contracted, and how it's going to be financed. Our concern is that there was no competitive bidding for any of the contracts that we identified at trial. There's the design build contract, there's four or five personal service contracts, some exceeding $600,000. None of those, none, were subject to competitive bidding. Could you explain your standing uh, to challenge the failure to engage in competitive bidding? 
Uh, we pursued, uh, pursuant the XREL uh, process, we, we uh, petitioned the Attorney General uh, and argued that there was a problem. They declined to take action. This is similar to what happened in the Peninsula Neighborhood Association case. So we have standing. But you didn't bring the competitive bidding argument in that case. That's correct because in that case, uh, it was a private, uh, private to private contracting by the developer. There was the, there was no contracts other than the original development agreement, which we agree under the ex first exhibit, the the Secretary of Transportation could select. <coughs> UIW as one of the proposers for the, the uh, for that development agreement. So you you're agreeing that the original PPI Act uh, 4746 uh, did not require uh, adherence to any competitive bidding laws. No, what we're agreeing is that the original PPI Act empowered, as it says in Exhibit One, empowered the secretary to solicit proposals and select up to six demonstration projects. And, and, that's, and that's echoed in the Exhibit 2, which, which simply says that any new proposal, um, which they had to do here, they had to alter the proposal uh, in, in uh, July, that, that that does not force the Secretary back through the process of soliciting new proposals. So my, my point is that in the PNA case, you were asked to repeal by implication laws governing tolling and what the state is asking you to do here is to read is, to, is essentially to do the same thing is to is, is is to repeal by implication existing laws that mandate competitive bidding on government projects which use public money as well as repeal by implication a specific law that says gas taxes are the sole source repay referendum 49 bonds Council, Section 13, uh, the new section of House Bill 2723 says that if a proposal is or has been selected for the design, development, construction, maintenance, or operation, would you, wouldn't you agree that this uh, current relationship with TNC is such a, uh, an outgrowth of a proposal that was, had already been um, uh, arrived at? No, I think if you look at Exhibit 3, which is an explanation of that provision you just referenced. Exhibit 3 in the final bill report said that the purpose of 2723 was to provide an alternative approach to financing, not an alternative approach to government contracting. And furthermore, as to your uh, statement uh, that, that this somehow grandfathers in a contract with Tacoma Narrows contractors, first, there was no contract with Tom Tacoma Narrows it contractors. It says a proposal, it doesn't say contract. Exactly, because if you go back, as, as Exhibit 2 talks about, alteration is not a new proposal. And the, what they're referring to is a PPI proposal. The, obje the point in 150 was to avoid having the Secretary of Transportation go back and solicit new demonstration project proposals, which would violate the sixth proposal limit. And that's echoed again by the bill report, which said the purpose of that section was to clarify that any PPI project that has been subject to an open competitive selection process is not subject to additional selection processes. They're referring to the project, not the contracts to build the bridge or to do the electrical work or any other of the other work. They're re solely referring to the project, would not have to go back through. Well, what about subsequent agreements made, maybe made to implement portions of the proposal that modify the proposal or that do not incorporate all the features of the proposal? Wouldn't that be subsequent contracts like we have here? No, because you go back to the, 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 the title of the section is alteration does not con constitute a new proposal. And when you read that, the sentence you're referring to, it says any modified agreement, and they're talking about a PPI agreement, does not constitute the, the solicitation. Again, that's a word of art used in the PPI law. The solicitation or consideration of additional pro proposals, again, PPI proposals, again, recognizing there were six, uh, there was a six demonstration project limit for any or portion of the service rendered under the modified agreement. So you have to read this with in the context of the other section relied upon by the state, which is exhibit one, which the, the operative words which I would highlight is solicit proposals. It talks about that the secretary shall, shall solicit only so many proposals. Moreover, if you go to uh, the um, exhibit four, uh, 
uh, clearly shows 